I, yeah, I've been going, I went through some struggles. So the, when I started off, you know, drawing and doing all that stuff, I, and I, I recently, this has come to a point where I don't think if you and I have talked to this and, uh, that I was officially diagnosed with ADHD, like, you know, went and got certified with all that. So I've always dealt with some issues of that nature. And what, why, why I'm saying that is, and we can talk about that more in depth is we, I was raised Irish Catholic, not that it's, I'm, this could be anywhere. So my father was a drinker and I drank, I started drinking when I was about 13, 14, maybe, maybe 15. And I was always the life of the party, but man, you know, it'd be like, Oh yeah. But I would, I'd black out probably like 85% of the time. Like I did what? Like, Oh my God. So I have, I have, I've been sober for the last 16 years, but I carried that through my life. And now that I'm really realizing how like my brain works and people's brains work, it's like it, what I did drink during like high school and college, yeah, did I have a great time? But I'm telling you, it's like I would be so irresponsible and I would just drink silly. So alcoholism, and my father actually died of cirrhosis when he was 62. I mean, that's pretty young. So we carried it through the family. And man, like I said, you guys, like 16 years ago, I said, I'm done. Like, you know, I, as you can see, I'm, I'm somewhat personable and whatnot, but when I drank, I just would be irresponsible. And it just, I don't want to say that. I mean, I'm full of regret in some ways, like, oh man, because I would be so irresponsible and not show up to things and, you know, be booked for something, you guys, and they'd be, they prepay me and I'd be like, oh, I'm not going to go. And, you know, so I struggled with that, but I used my charm to get back into it. And, you know, I did, I graduated from college. I mean, I had jobs, had gigs, and did all those things, but. I never really realized the effect of it until I stopped. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Did you see how I overcame addiction too? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Probably you. Yeah, it was it was a long addiction to soda that ruled my life for almost twenty years. And the other day was the anniversary of me quitting. That's so awesome, dude. So proud of you. But isn't it like when you think about it now? You're like, wow, I don't know if you beat yourself up sometimes or if you're just like, oh, and you're elated, aren't you? Like, it's uh, it's like you climb that hill, that mountain, and you're like, oh, I'm not going back down there. I'm going climbing more mountains, more ambition. Yeah, that's what I'm at, you know? And I realized after quitting the soda how it was ridiculous of me to waste all my savings on an addiction for the years. Right, right. But again, I mean, that's the past, and now you're a better person for it. And I find, so when I did quit drinking, I stopped cold turkey. So I, I had had four DUIs. My first DUI, not that we have to go in depth. If, if I'm bored, you guys let me know. But uh, I, was, I was 19 going to ASU, living at home. I had just bought a car and I, we were drinking down at the bar at ASU. I lived in Tempe, drove home, got in a car wreck, 100 stitches in my head. Uh, I got about five or six tickets, like uh, minor, blah, 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 all that stuff. And uh, yeah, car was totaled, total, total. And luckily the people that, uh, that did hit me were not injured. All that said, I was like, uh, my dad was like, I go, dad, do you think I have a drinking problem? And at that time he was drinking this stuff. He's like, no, no, Irish Catholic. Like literally that would be his excuse. I'm like, well, I don't think that's normal. And I probably went back to drinking didn't even think, didn't even associate all that happening, the drinking part at all until now, I mean, until I got older, but uh, probably about a month later, I'll party with my friends again and drinking. And then I got a DUI, a couple more throughout the years. And then 2007, uh, 2006, the 7th of July, I got my last DUI in Scottsdale. No wrecks or anything. And I was handcuffed, you guys, in the back of a car and then they're towing they're towing a back of a police car and they're towing my buddy's car. It wasn't even my car. And they took it. They confiscated it and they go, yeah, DUI. And I go, I'm done drinking. And I never drank since then. Did, I bartend and I help people out, but I haven't touched a, a drop of it. And I, I help other people as well that drink. But I stopped cold turkey. Like that night I was like done. And I know it's so hard to, uh, that people are addicted to things to get off like that. But I just, anyway, I just stopped. So did you have to go to Alcoholics Anonymous or no? No, I didn't. But at that time, this was 16 years ago. 
<laughs> and Vernon probably, well, I don't know if you've heard about it either, Doug. There was um, Tent City, a place called Tent City in Arizona. And so the sheriff put these, and you guys, it's like out in the middle of the desert, and it's literally tents with about, I'm thinking 5,000, 6,000 guys. Now, it's not all DUI guys. It's like criminals and people. I mean, it, it was, so they sent me there for four weeks for a month. Plus, I had to pay all the, yeah. So <laughs> it was pretty rough. It was like going to jail, jail, but it was mm -hmm. outside in uh, like Arizona in the heat. And so you had to make friends quick. So it was like a little mini jail, that, that kind of. But the weirdest thing is, is they, after three weeks, they let you go and um, go work, like work release. So I was bartending, ironically, at the Four Seasons in Scottsdale at the same time. So I would go bartend in the day and sleep there at night. And uh, yeah, there was guys that would come back drunk to the to the headquarters to the place, and they would send them up river to like for three years to jail. So that was a lesson learned, man. But okay, really quickly. But at the little cantina, they sold little pencils uh, and paper and Snickers. So I would like guys would be they would get in fights all the time. I would make little cartoons in jail there, and I would give it to the guys, and they're like. Like the biggest guy, I'd be like, check this out, dude. You go, like, that's funny, boy. All right, you sit over here. I was like, this saved my life. <laughs>